Gambling streams was a fascinating experience on Twitch. The gaming platform turned into a gambling reality show where streamers would bet huge amounts of money, like XQC claiming he's wagered over $685 million, or Trainwreck's TV being down $35 million. But don't worry, he made $360 million in just 16 months. The highest paid NBA players need around 4 to 5 years to make $200 million dollars just four years ago these numbers by those streamers would have been inconceivable those streamers could gamble astronomical sums of money that most of us could only dream of but how are they able to get those ridiculous sums by just being content creators this is the moment stick.com makes its grand appearance on stage the most popular and most likely profitable crypto casino is the one handing those massive paychecks to content creators celebrities such as drake or even organization to to gamble or promote its site. Gambling content was at an all time high, viewers were there and money flowed in for all the parties involved. But unfortunately, you can only go down when you are at the apex of your art. After the Twitch streamer Slicker got exposed for stealing and scamming $300,000 from friends, fans to fund his gambling addiction, this drama and the lack of ethics behind those streams led to multiple content creators believing that Twitch should remove that type of content. On October 18, 2022, Twitch dropped the gavel and banned gambling on sites that didn't align with international gambling regulations. They did say adieu to the golden goose that type of content was. Is it the right decision? Yes, but it is not the best decision. People consider that those streams lack ethics. Why? Because streamers like Aiden Ross have a lot of underage viewers. Therefore, it's easier to promote and influence them into gambling. Those kids see their favorite streamers hit millions dollar jackpots left and right. They see the unrealistic amounts of money flowing in. They may steal their parents cards to gamble and enter adulthood as gambling addicts. But kids are more exposed to in real life gambling such as betting with friends, playing cards or even buying national lottery scratch cards. And in some cases, the parents are the one buying the ticket. Even if some use or steal their parents card to gamble online, do you really think they're going to bet thousands of dollars to the point they become a addicted to gambling, especially after losing ones, and let's not forget all the requirements nowadays to use a credit card online. Their parents will notice it and regardless of their situation, as a parent, you have to talk, explain and warn your child about gambling in general. Yes, they do glamorize gambling to underage viewers, but it's not worse than what they see daily. You got content creators out there promoting crypto scams, but nothing is done against them. Ice Poseidon scammed at least $500,000 from his his fans and face little to no punishment. Lana Ross, $1.5 million. Nothing either. If you want a more recent example, Logan Paul promoted a crypto scam and even admitted it. Did he receive any form of punishment for jeopardizing his viewers' financial stability? So gambling is bad and should be banned, but scamming is okay and you can keep your channel? Okay, got it. You can't promote crypto or NFTs and warn about the risk. That's not how you sell the life problem solving potion. Whereas in gambling, you can at least warn your audience about the risk. If we're talking about adults, they should be held accountable. You want to put your life savings on the red, your fault. You scam your friends to get a triple seven, same thing. Of course, we should try to help them, but I don't know how banning those websites will be effective. I understand that websites like stake.com don't follow American, French or other countries regulations which means less protection for the consumer but if a kid wants to gamble he will find a way no matter what. And isn't it still a problem if I see a sports streamer bet 10k on a team and win? Am I not going to be tempted after seeing that? If you want to protect them then ban any form of gambling. But if you truly want to talk about ethics let's talk about OnlyFans or the bathtub meta. Some female content and creators stream themselves in their bathtub to attract desperate or horny individuals. We are on a platform that was made to record gaming content. Of course, the core idea can change, but how is it fair to compete in this way on a platform that prioritizes live viewers in a world where the average person's libido is maybe at an all-time high, but also sexual frustration, and especially for men, you think it's ethical for streamers to take advantage of that situation to profit from, to use the loneliness of certain 
with people to gain monetary profit. Just like with people who gamble, no one forces them to donate or subscribe. But they still take advantage of this situation. Or even female streamers in sexual attires, they know it will attract horny dudes who might donate. They will act like they care but got more obvious dollar eyes than cartoon characters. If you don't have $10, you probably don't have time to watch Twitch because you should be working. You should be trying to earn money. Uh, it's not a ton. It's not like a ton of money. So being like, I'm broke, I can't afford to sub, it, that doesn't really track. What you mean to say is, I'm so irresponsible with my money, I can't support the entertainment that I enjoy. <laughs> Even if female streamers disrespecting and shaming viewers who donate and subscribe is less common nowadays, it doesn't mean your wallet isn't their main goal. If she's one slip away from flashing her viewers, then I think it's self-explanatory. Similar strategy with OnlyFans. Would you care about them if they didn't sell NSFW content? You got the impression you're bonding with someone, but in reality, you're bonding with the screen, they are bonding with your bank account. In this particular case, the fact that content creators can easily conversate with their subscribers on OnlyFans means that you talking to your subscribers can lead to the impression that this feeling of emptiness disappeared. But the moment they stop paying, they vanish. Faster than Will Smith's popularity after slapping Chris Rock. Maybe they didn't want to stop paying, but due to financial reasons, they had no other option. Don't you think it's going to make them suffer once you cut them like that? But at the end of the day, their goal isn't to make sure that user 111 feels appreciated, but that he buys that premium pack for some content you can easily find on Reddit. I do not hold any grudges against those people. They do what is necessary to sleep under a roof and pay the bills but considering you still take advantage of certain people's situation i do not think it's ethical kids can still donate or subscribe to an only fans you add that to instagram or tiktok's algorithms made to promote that type of content you are basically creating the perfect recipe to hook young viewers on porn porn addiction is something i consider real and the younger you start the harder it is to strip away from it other examples could have been used such as video games with in-game purchases but at the end of the day you can't make an omelette without breaking eggs. You can't become filthy rich by prioritizing ethics. Companies like Apple exploit people from countries with lower work regulations and that doesn't stop people from buying their products. You can't eradicate all injustices and that doesn't mean you shouldn't attempt to. But I'm sure there's worse on Twitch than those gambling streams. I think we all forget that Twitch is a company looking to make as much profit as possible. And from a business standpoint, this decision is stupid. Twitch is declining and losing streamers to new rival platforms such as Kick that offer max contracts to streamers and have less restraining rules. You lose streamers like Adin, Kai or Train, you lose hundreds or thousands of daily viewers. If those gambling streams are going to happen on another platform, wouldn't it be better to do it under your surveillance to ensure that those streamers warn their viewers and provide some sort of help? Prohibition is a perfect example. The Americans believe that banning the consumption of alcohol would make the country more dynamic and less violent. And they were wrong. The US lost a source of income and crime increased. It's always better to regulate than ban because people will always find a way to procure what they're looking for. Anyway, that's just my thought on those streams. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I hope to see you soon for another one. And remember, you don't need to be an athlete to get the max.